Do you think it's important to bring back advanced manufacturing to the U.S.? I absolutely think it's important to bring back advanced manufacturing. I think we've got a long way to go there just because of we have outsourced this for a very, very long time to, to our detriment. Also, the emphasis on the workforce isn't there. TSMC, you know, they're building giant plants here uh, now because of the mm -hmm. CHIPS Act and everything else. They are importing a lot of their engineers and workforce from Taiwan. That Ultimately, I don't view that as a bad thing because they'll assimilate over here and we'll have access to a much better workforce with immigration. Even though it's a convoluted process, at least there would be a pathway there. But I would say the reason why they're importing all these engineers is that we don't even have the workforce to support those style of advanced fabs. It's, it's well, not a great strategic position for us to be in. So we don't have the workforce for it? To, to staff up an advanced semiconductor fab yeah. to the tune of TSMC style? No. I mean, the, the, the chairman slash CEO of, of TSMC will say that very bluntly and has publicly. Wow. I see, I see why we have problems actually launching startups in that space too, because we don't even have people interested in it in the first place. Well, the pro also the problem is there is there's a lot of interesting new technologies being developed in R&D. The uh -huh. problem is the cost of entry. So let's say you come up with a technology that really may increase the productivity or any sort of efficiency in the semiconductor realm. Testing it out is a hundreds of millions of dollar problem. Sure. You can't just like plop something into a semiconductor fab and see if it works. That's <laughs> not how those things work. Yeah. So when you come up with processes, unless you have an infrastructure around feeding those systems, like all the auxiliary factories, all the auxiliary support that goes into feeding these larger semiconductor fabs, you'll see that the, there's just these larger and larger chasms start getting excavated around breakthroughs mm -hmm. because there's no one in those intermediate steps supporting that. Because so back in the, back in its heyday when Intel built its new Pentium processor plant, you know, in um, outside outside of Phoenix, Arizona, it's not just the factory that's there. It's like, yeah, that's great. Intel built a plant there. Mm -hmm. It's a huge plant. It was a great feat. It, it was the whole thing is very advanced. It's the thousand other factories that go around it that feed that plant. A semiconductor plant does not run on its own. True. It's fed by a bazillion other industries, a bazillion other material and parts suppliers that feed very specific parts that are very high precision and I have a go through a very qualified supply chain. So when you start outsourcing the manufacturing or we don't invest in new next gen fabs here, the public immediately sees like, oh man, there's a $4 billion Intel plant. That was how much it cost, I believe, whenever they built that one in Chandler. It was $4 billion mm -hmm. back then, by the way, not now. <laughs> how back long ago then. was that? It's been 20 years, I want to say. Wow. 15, 20 years. What the public doesn't see is like, it's not that plant. That That's a very important thing. That's sort of the capstone. It's all the other suppliers that have to feed that plant. Yeah. And whenever that infrastructure gets eroded, slash that supply chain gets eroded, what we don't see is all the support that goes into making that. So there's a whole lot of very skilled labor that goes into that. People that will choose career paths as a result of a secure job that comes out of college doing those things, et cetera. And, and that, that whole thing just sort of evaporates. And so you don't have an ecosystem to feed mm -hmm. this very, very large machine that is an advanced fab. And the problem is very fundamental. It's very grassroots. It's very grassroots. It's like we have to value manufacturing. We have to value making things yeah. versus saving a couple pennies short term. Uh -huh. The argument I always have with my friends is like we, we've been playing quarter by quarter capitalism <laughs> and our competitors have been playing cent decade by decade to yeah. century by century capitalism. And it's it's not serving a, a larger purpose for us. Yeah. I'll put it that way. It's all about quarterly revenues versus what's our long term growth and goal strategy. And we've kind of betrayed our future selves yeah. because we want to make next quarter selves look a whole lot better.